Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Good morning from Nebraska. Uh, welcome to my off the cuff on this bright and early Monday morning for some of you on the West Coast. Tried to find a time that was kind of good for everybody and still worked for me. So uh, welcome and uh, I'm so happy to see all of you here. I'm going to start right away. I don't have a lot of announcements because this is a, like a super, super big topic. I, I, I could have actually um, broken this down and did, hold on a second. Uh, I could have broken this down and did um, one section, an entire show, but I, I tried to cram it in. If it seems like a lot of you want more information on one section, I can go back and I can do another show. That's why it's off the cuff. We kind of just do what we can do. Okay, so what am I wearing? Take a look at this one. This is a unique, exclusive watercolor that Jenna did. It was perfect for today. Uh, it says, he shall, he shall give his angels charge over you. Perfect for what we're talking about. It is absolutely gorgeous. I can't even tell you enough. In person, it's like one of those things that just like stops people in their tracks. Beautiful, beautiful tea. There's all kinds of watercolors. The one that says faith, hope, love. So go to joyandcountry.com. Uh, that's one of the ways that helps us do the gatherings that uh, was prophesied by Kim Clement that we're in the middle of doing right now. We're over two years in um, and on number 12. So whatever you can do, go to joyandcountry.com. Help us out. Uh, Jenna also said, because she's the one that put it up, it's part of our watercolor collection. So if you look in the collection of watercolor, you get a lot more inspirational water. Color angel wing tees and colorful designs. Um, lots of new styles added for spring. Hundreds of products in our clearance section up to 65% off. That's that. I'll, I'll remind you at the, at the end again. Um, and those who help me, remind me to remind you. All right, good. Um, the link's in the description for this. Um, also, it's in Dolores' closet. It's in watercolor collection. And if you go in the description, you'll get uh, my Rumble channel, all of their social media platforms. Remember, uh, OTC, we call it not over the counter, off the cuff, uh, is on uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at noon Eastern. Fab Four is on Rumble at Friday at 6 p.m. Uh, Eastern. And then our weekly online church service. Wow, what a time we had last night. If you have a Rumble channel, go to my, uh, go to Dennis and Delora, The Gathering, and look up The Gathering at Solomon's Porch last night at 6 p.m. Eastern, every Sunday on Rumble. Uh, it was quite a time. It's called Desperate uh, Times Call for Desperate Measures. Okay. So let's, let's get this party started, as I say, and Sean says every week. Um, I laugh when he says that. I say that because I'm from Massachusetts. We used to say that more than, uh, you know, a saying or a song or whatever. Um, okay. For those of you who knew off the cuff, it's exactly that. It's me. Uh, I get led by God. I really do to go in uh, directions. I'm not sure what directions to go in until the day before. And then I work on it and I do the best I can. And um, it, it depends if it's something that is really, really important. Like I'm going to do a deeper dive into Antarctica. I got so much stuff. So I'm either going to do that Wednesday or Friday of this week. Um, and we're going to go even deeper in it and, and talk about the, the entities and stuff that are there. I think it's Maybe a good one to follow up even on this. So, okay, what is meant by the unseen realm? Uh, obviously, it's anything that are not is not seen with our physical eye. Okay, that's the spirit world. Um, uh, our our creator spoke both into existence. God spoke the seen realm and the unseen realm into existence. Now, for those of you that aren't into um, scripture or whatever, I'm going to use that for those that are as I am, but this is not a Bible study. I don't want you to think it is. This is discussing, why do I do these? I do these to empower you. We are battling right now. Demonic forces, uh, demonic forces coming in um, many, many 
uh, ways, in many uh, forms. And it's very important that we understand that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Now, sure, someone comes to our door to steal something in our house. Uh, we've got a couple of guns and uh, they come in and they break in and they try to harm us. We're going to use them. That's a natural thing. But what is inspiring everything that is happening in this world today first comes from the spirit realm. All the corruption, everything that has already happened uh, is a manifestation of what was created by Satan and his minions, which was the third of the angels that fell from heaven with him. And they brought his plan for this world through demonic beings, through uh, people that are possessed, through being um, people in, in our government and all over the world being used by these beings knowingly and unknowingly. Actually, pretty much everything that is bad that we deal with in our life is first concocted by demons in the spirit and then manifested in our lives. Second uh, Corinthians 4.18 says, fix your eyes on what is unseen, not what is seen. What is seen is temporary. What is unseen is eternal. So what does that mean? It means we have been dealing with the same stinking demons and spirits for thousands of years. No more was created. These are the same ones with the same tactics that they use against believers especially because what they're trying to do is separate you from God. That's their whole plan. And if you're not separated from God, then they... Either way, they want to destroy you. They hate human beings because we have, those of us that follow God, have the spirit of God within us. Uh, this show is probably the most important one I've done so far. The enemy wants to keep you in darkness. But if you can grasp everything that you are dealing with in your personal life, in our country, and in the world, was birthed in the spirit, then you will soon learn how to break free. Okay. Uh, Ephesians 6, 12, I mentioned it. Uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness. Now I got to make a point there. The word principalities, principality means orders of angels. There can very well be uh, an order of angels on the good side, that's good angels that aid us, that the two thirds that are in heaven with God and then come to earth to help us, that war in the heavenlies in the second heaven. And I'm going to go into all of the heavens, first, second, and third. But understand, when you say principal and you pray against a principal, you better be specific. Because there are principalities that are good and you do not want to pet pray against those that are orders of angels of principalities that are helping us. Okay? Okay, good. There's the foundation. Uh, Psalm 82.1, Geneva Bible. This is what I'm going to use. The 1599 Geneva Bible in Bible Gateway and other places online is what I um, mostly use because the Geneva Bible is the one... Uh, that is the closest, in my opinion, to what was uh, originally written, especially if you go into the Greek and the Hebrew, uh, and King James didn't get his hands on it and get rid of a lot of stuff. And, and whoever did the uh, NIV, which is probably the worst one right now, didn't get their hands on that. Uh, so that's why I go to Geneva, okay, just so you all know. Uh, Psalm 82.1, God stands in the assembly of gods, little g. He judges among gods, little g. Now, this drives some people that are like, you know, um, no, there's no other gods, there's no other gods. Yeah, 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 there are. Um, we're not used to hearing this, but in Hebrew, it means uh, angelic host or spirit beings, okay? 
God created all that exists. And I will go into when we get into demons, what happened. But um, if you go to Psalm 89, 7, God, God's is translated as Elohim. But most of the time, uh, Elohim is used to describe a supernatural being, but we call Elohim God. Now, God is Elohim. He's the Elohim of Elohims. But Elohim, the meaning is supernatural being. Listen, stuff like I'm telling you today is going to change your prayer life because you're now going to know what you're praying against. You're going to be able to be very specific and it will change where you are in life. God doesn't want you sick. God doesn't want you poor. So this, this is why I'm giving you a foundation. It's very important you understand this. Now, Yahweh is used for Elohim as well, but that's in this context. There is no other like him. Yahweh, who is the Elohim, who is Jesus. He is the only one. He is the creator of all other Elohim. He is the most high God, okay? He is a son like the angels in us. We are sons of God, but he is the only begotten son, okay? Psalm 82, 6, God said, you are God's sons of the most high, all of you. So when, when he calls all of his creation sons of God, but Jesus, according to John 3, 16, is the only begotten son of God. Right there, it says there are more. Begotten is unique. He is the one that was chosen as part of the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, to come and sacrifice himself on a cross for our sins. That way we are not accountable. Okay? All right. So why am I go bother going down this road? Especially if you remember we are all sons of God. It's important you remember that as I move forward on where I'm going. Okay? We're moving in a day where uh, Satan will use verses like I'm giving you to create confusion and make you question. Wait, wait, there's more than one God? So so there are gods. No, that's not what I'm saying. God wanted a family and his family is in the both unseen world and those of us on earth. We're rep all representatives of God. He sees all human life as sacred. But the world isn't like he began it. Man, men fell into darkness. I'm not going to go into that. Uh, but he wanted to share one of his attributes, which is pure freedom. He wanted to share that with his creation. He didn't want them programmed, all of us programmed like robots. So let's look at the origin of his intended family, seen and unseen. OK, supernatural beings he created. That's all different kinds of angels. Um, I, you can go you can go through the Bible, name all kinds of cherubim, seraphims, warring angels. I'll go through some of them here. But, you know, worshiping angels, they fly around the, the throne and cry, holy, holy, holy. There's many, many different angels. But remember, you never pray to an angel. An angel is the only one you pray to is God. An angel is a created being as us. The difference is God uses them in times of war to battle. Uh, like Michael and his angels uh, fought Satan and his angels in Revelation 12, where it says Satan and the fallen angels were defeated and ultimately condemned to hell in Matthew 25. So, there are angels that are messengers. There are angels that are warring angels. But God cast Lucifer, Satan, now known as Satan, and the fallen angels to earth. So what are the demons' ultimate assignment? What does Satan 
want to do? Why all of the craziness in the world? Why is the world in an uproar? Why is, what is the bottom line? It's not money for him. That's how he tempts others. He can't use money. He's a spirit. So what is it? It's to lead the world away from God and into sin. So how does he do this? He possesses people in the physical realm. Not him, personally. Demons, it's like uh, Jesus, Jesus cast a legion of demons out of someone. And he sent them into pigs. These are demons that inhabit who you are. Now, a demon's not going to go near you. If you are God's, he will oppress you. But he can't possess you because you already have the spirit of God within you. You don't want to go near that spirit. You don't want to go near Jesus. But he will use things to oppress you. Things in life. If you've got anything, uh, you've got a, a, a habit. That's a little hook he'll use. You've got a uh, something from your past that you didn't get healed from. That's a hook. He will use that. So he possesses people to cause them. Others, physical and spiritual harm. He blinds the minds of unbelievers. He will blind them. I have unbelievers in my life. They cannot see. Literally, they cannot see what I see. They think, oh, that's just her. No, my spiritual eyes are open like this. Everything to me is spiritual. Everything I see is spiritual. Every movie I watch, TV show I watch, everything people say, I think of it as a spiritual thing. So he blinds the minds of unbelievers. He promotes false doctrine. There are a lot of false prophets around that seem very supernatural, even have supernatural signs. And it's used to deceive people. Uh, deceiving people nationally in our country and internationally. And then he uses demons to torment believers. That's what I said. Uh, so how do you fight this? I'm going to do a whole show on the, arm, uh, the, the full armor of God. That's in Ephesians, Ephesians 14. Go read about it. I would suggest you go to Ephesians 14 and you can Google or whatever you use. Uh, Ephesians 14, Matthew Henry commentary. Very good. I love the Matthew Henry commentary. They're not crazy, wild-eyed, just very. They break it down into Greek, and uh, you can you can get a lot of information out of that. So, but I will do one on the on the uh, arm, the whole armor of God. So let's veer now. Let's go. What is an angel? A good angel, not a demonic angel. An angel that is still serving. God and still serving and our messengers and those that are helping us, helping mankind. They are mentioned many times in scriptures. Um, their, their home is heaven. They do battle those that are warring angels. They all have a job just like us on earth. They have a job, what they have to do. Some of them delivered messages like uh, the, the messenger that came to Mary. And said, "You will be. Uh, she will be overshadowed, and you will have a child, and and he will be the savior." That was a messenger. Okay, I've had several of those in my life, and I will explain those to you. I'll give you a testimony of that for those have not who've not heard it. Um, they watch over us uh, like God's watchmen. Uh, there are, like I said, some of them are warriors, some are worshippers. Um, Really, some were just created to sing holy, holy, holy around the throne of God. Psalm 91, he will command his angels concerning you. That's why I love this t-shirt so much. He shall give his angels charge over you. I love wearing stuff like this. It empowers me. So why aren't they taking care of everything when we pray? Why are we still in the middle of this craziness that's going on in the in our country? If you read in Daniel, I'm not going to go into that. He'll go in the book of Daniel, where Daniel prayed 
and he prayed and he fasted for three weeks before it got an, an answer through from an angel. And he said, what took you so long? Look, look what's going on. Things were crazy. The angel said, I had to battle to get through to you, to get through the second heaven. There was a war going on. It came from the third heaven with an answer from God. He had to get through the second heaven to get to Daniel. That's why I didn't get here. That's why it took me three weeks. So let me tell you a very interesting, couple of interesting stories. Uh, if you've been watching me, you know I was an atheist. I mean, staunch. I wasn't like, hey, you're okay, I'm okay. I'm like, you're wacko. That's, that was me. When I, Jenna, who does Joy and Country, and many of you have seen her and know her, our daughter, our second oldest, um, she was like three, two and a half years old, three years old. I had my son was like two months old in a, or three months old in a, um, a, a stroller. Uh, my mother, we lived in California, my mom and, and uh, Dennis and our oldest who was uh, five, Jenna and our baby we were at Disneyland and what had happened was um, what had happened was we Jenna, even as a little girl, I mean, she could at, at, at two, two and a half years old, she was reading the newspaper. Brilliant, brilliant child. What happened was she was um, looking at cards and my mom was supposed to watch her. And I turned around and my mom is somewhere. And I said, where's Jenna? Oh, she was right here. Turned around, long story short, because these are wild stories. Uh, we, now, here I am, an atheist, guys. I'm an atheist. We turn around, and what happens is she's gone for like an hour. We had people looking for her. We had, she was, now, here we were in Tomorrowland. A woman rushes up to me and, out of nowhere. And says, are you looking for a little girl? And I said, yes. She said, follow me. I followed her. She was in Frontierland on the other side of Disneyland. A man was holding her. He handed her to me. We all got around Jenna, turned around, boom, gone. He was gone in a second. I couldn't figure it out. I said, well, he was probably, maybe he worked here and he needed to... Uh, you know, go back to work or, you know, me as an atheist, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. I don't ever think it's God. So then I received Jesus. I, I, I found God made himself very clear to me in a Catholic church. I got saved quickly. God came upon me. It was a quick work. I was driving home from the restaurant we owned and Dennis and I had made the decision that we were going to sell that restaurant because we we felt we couldn't push liquor anymore. And it was clearing out anyway, because I was laying hands on people and they were getting delivered of alcoholism. So we had like nobody in there anyway. Well, our silent partner that actually put up most of the money, um, we ran it and he was the one that gave the money. So we were partners with him. He had nobody else to run it. We had told him that we were going to leave. And we told them because of our faith and on and on. So I'm bringing our last deposit to the bank and we're ready to leave. And I, I it's snowing. And I, we were in New York and I stopped at uh, Sunrise Highway. A lot of you know what that is. Uh, and, and across, snowing, snowing, snowing. This old, old woman is going across the street. And she looks right at me in, in the car. And Dennis said to me, you've got a lot of money, go right to the bank. Cause I was known to pick up strays. I feel bad for people. So I'm hearing Dennis's voice in my head. I said, you know what? I can't pick her up. She looks back at me again. She's in snow, holding bags with a king. 
in, in a shoe like this high, one higher than the other foot in about 95 years old. So I go, the light turns green. I go to go through and I veered and I picked her up. Well, I got around the side of the car, said, you want to get in? Yes. I picked her up and wouldn't you know, she gets in and I said, uh, I'm so sorry. You know, where are you going? She said, thank you, dear. She started talking to me. You have children. Oh, I see you love God. I had a couple of cross little pictures up on my thing that kids gave me. She said, you love God. And she said, I just want you to know God will never leave you or forsake you. Now I'm making a very long story short. She, I said, where are you going? She said, you can bring me up in the bank. Now it is like, you can't even see in front of your face. It is snowing so hard. Like, like an inch every half hour. I pull up, it's a hill and I pull up and the, it's a ways to get to the door. So I said to her, look, ma'am, I'm going to walk you to the door. No, 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 you're not. I said, yes, ma'am, I'm going to walk you to the door. No, no, I'm going to do it myself. So I get her out of the car. I mean, she was insistent. I get her out of the car. She gets out. I come back in the car and I look and she's not there. And I'm like, oh no, she fell. I run out of the car. She's nowhere. No footprints. All there is is my footprints. No footprints to the bank. I go into the bank. Did anybody come in here? No, we're, we're closing up. So now I know it's an angel. I flipped out. I keep hearing God will never leave you or forsake you. God will never leave you or forsake you. And what happens is I tell Dennis, I said, it had to be an angel, it had to be an angel. One week later, we left the restaurant. We took all the pictures that were ours. We took the little freezer that was ours, the microwave that was ours. One week later, knock, 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 knock. Open the door. Dennis is at church in a service on a Wednesday night. My kids are in the house where they are playing. They are on their bikes. They come in. Um, two detectives standing there. I still remember one of them's name. Uh, read me right my rights. You're under arrest for grand larceny, second degree. P.S. I get brought with my kids handcuffed into a church to get Dennis, our church that we ended up on staff. And Dennis comes out, handcuffed, gets in the car. We, the man... I found out he was former three-letter agency. We didn't know that before. Got us arrested because he had people in the restaurant that thought we were crazy because we were bringing people in to get healed and stuff in our office. Remember, this is in the 80s, guys. And we're, we're now up for grand larceny second degree for 10 years. They let me go because I pleaded with the chief of police. Dennis had to stay the night in jail. I had to give myself in Friday, that following Friday. Now, I'm in the jail cell the following Friday. I can't believe this. I'm arrested for something we never did. A woman comes in the thing. Delora O'Brien, Delora O'Brien. This is a week later after the angel. I said, that's me, that's me. She said, Standing there with a the clipboard, she said, look, I just want to let you know, I work on the fifth floor. She said, there is, you know, there. I called your husband. He's coming to get you. This is going to be fine. He said, she said, I'm telling you, you'll be released. You'll you talk to your attorney and so on and so forth. I said, okay. She said, can I pray with you? She gave me her hand and I took her hands, both my hands around her one. And she said the most incredible prayer. And she looked me in the eyes and she said, please remember, God will never leave you nor forsake you. And she left. Well, 15 minutes on the button. They came and got me, brought me into court. Uh, I see Dennis sitting there. He's waiting for me. They released me on my own recognizance. We have to appear for a trial several months later. We we leave. We, we both are so appreciative of this woman. We go to the front receptionist and we said, look, we explain the situation. We said, we just want to thank her. Uh, we didn't, I didn't get her name, but she said she works on the fifth floor. And, and the woman said, ma'am, I'm sorry. We didn't send anyone in there. And, and there's only four floors in this building. 
Now I've got one when I was an atheist and two, P.S., Christmas Eve. If you want to know how the story ends, not that it matters. Christmas Eve, we get a call from this man. And he says to us, I'm going to do everything to put you guys up. You made me lose so much money. You have no idea. I'll, I'll lie. I'll cheat. I'll do anything to make sure you guys. I said, you do know you're falsely accusing us. And, and that's okay. I want you to know Jesus loves you. He will never, he will never leave you. He forgives you. He's waiting to hear from you. Well, I went on and on and on. Dead silence on the other end. Click. The phone hangs up. He hangs up. Two hours later, we get a call from our attorney, who was a born-again Christian and head of Cops for Christ at that time on Long Island. And we got him through one of the detectives that arrested us because he knew it was such a sham. He says, screaming, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. After I showed this guy the love of God, he dropped all charges. Of course he did. We didn't do it. But this was entertaining angels unaware. People you don't understand. We are living in a complete spiritual realm, but sojourning through this life. The realm of the spirit is more real. We live in a temporary realm. Sojourning through this. Heaven is our home. And we are battling forces that do not come from this earth, but are using people from this earth. So I mentioned, we're going to veer now. I mentioned a little bit of this in the Antarctica off the cuff, the Nephilim. So who are the Nephilim? I have my own, and I'm going to go into this now more, and the lands that could exist beyond what we see, I'm going to do it in the next Antarctica, okay? It's either going to be probably Wednesday or Friday. Genesis says the Nephilim are sons of God and daughters of men. It implies a union between a fallen angel spirit and a human female. That's a Nephilim. Uh, remember at the beginning when in Psalm 82, I spoke about <clears throat> the sons of God? They uh, were as well. Um, numbers 13, 32, and 33. This is what it says. Um, 10 of the 12 spies described the Anakites, a Nephilim. Nephati tribe as descendants of the Nephilim. And there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, who come of the Nephilim. And when in our own sight, they saw us as grasshoppers. Okay, so they were big. That numbers was after the flood. I keep hearing, well, there can't be Nephilim. They died in the flood. No, they did not. Either that or here, Genesis 6, 4. The Nephilim were on the earth, both in those days, referring, referring to the days of Noah and afterward. Okay. So now we're dealing with Nephilim. So why are the Nephilim here? They didn't get killed in the flood. Look, they were half spirit. One of two things happened. I don't have all the answers. Uh, no one does, actually. Um, they tell you they do. The only thing you know about them is they're lying. So what are they? They're a spirit of half spirit, fallen angel and half human. Could they have uh, di all died in the flood and then the fallen angels mated with more human women after the flood? Sure. Could it be that because they were half spirit, they could exist in this second heaven and that would make it more that they were uh, more spirit at that point and they survived? Sure. We are battling them. The Nephilim. I believe they are working out of many places, one of, one of which I believe is Antarctica. And they are 
battling with the fallen angels, demons now that have been given power to be principalities over areas. So principalities, Ephesians 6, 12. This is what they are. In the Greek, the word is arca, A-R-C-H-E. It means, this is out of Ephesians 3, 3.10, I believe. It means angels that guide other lower beings or nations or groups of people or institutions. Principalities preside over bands of angels and charge them with fulfilling the divine destiny of Satan. It's not divine, but it's in divination. It is of divination, a divine nature. It is supernatural. This can be good or evil. You understand? Principalities can be good or evil. Usually you hear about it as evil because that's the way it's mentioned, you know, for principalities, powers, uh, powers of darkness. The Nephilim just might be principalities in the realm they exist, like I said, in Antarctica. Are they over known worlds, which are us, and in over many politicians that they are summoned to Antarctica, like John Kerry, that on the day Mr. T won in the year 2016, that he was summoned there because they were flipping and it wasn't supposed to happen. And they blew it. The humans blew it. Perhaps. Are they the ones giving orders? So, like I said, I'm going to do another one. This is the sidebar. And this is the road I'm going down in the next Antarctica. So let's go where many of you have written to me and asked me to go. First, second, and third heavens. What are they? We the three we know of. Could there be more? Sure. The Bible says that if you, you know, we there was enough, there's enough knowledge about this stuff that could fill up the whole earth with books. So obviously we don't have it all, but we have enough. God gave us enough to know who he is, understand who he is, understand his love for us, understand he's working for us along with heavenly beings and all kinds of angels and the messengers and the warring angels and everything that are around us to help us lest we dash our foot against a stone. Okay? So the first heaven, God, it says, Genesis, God made the heavens, three heavens, plural, three, and the earth where we are the earthly realm. The first heaven refers to the sky realm. The sky uh, it encompasses the earth's atmosphere, the clouds, the, you know, the air, atmosphere in the air, uh, the sky. It's what we see when we look up or we're in an airplane. That's the first heaven. We're amongst, it's the sky we see and everything that's in it. Okay. Uh, the second heaven is the celestial invisible realm where warring angels, which are some of the angels, not all of the angels, some angels exist, and the demons are. It's where warfare takes place. Um, when scripture says there are forces in the heavenly realm that are battling, that's not in the third heaven. That's the second heaven. Now, there's a lot of activity in the second heaven. If you're a praying person, this is why it's sometimes harder to break through, to get to God. You feel like the heavens are brass. That's why I say that sometimes. I say, look, I'm praying and the heavens are brass. It means I can't get through. Just like Daniel and the angel said, I've been trying to get through to you for three weeks, bro. I couldn't get through. The war is so great. So if you feel that way, you feel that resistance, then there's a lot of warring going on. Last night in Solomon's porch, man, boom, we busted right through. The glory of God came down. I wasn't on for three minutes. I got goosebumps thinking about it. 
and the glory of God fell on that online church service last night. People were getting healed, telling us we, they were healed online. Sometimes it's like that. Sometimes it's not. But why do I say, be very careful who you give your ear gate to? Why? Because sometimes they're hearing from the second heaven. See, if your ear is open to anything, you just want to hear from the supernatural and you're calling it God. The devil will use that and give you. That's why people say things and it doesn't come to pass. People said, yes, 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 this is going to happen. It doesn't come to pass. And they it, so now it gets more general. People will say, oh, the, you know, the sun will come up tomorrow or, oh, there's going to be a big, you know, be an earthquake over the next year. I mean, very general that we know are going to happen. Unlike Kim, there'll be two presidents. You know, T will be a trumpet. You know, that kind of stuff. Isaiah, what he said, a Messiah. That's the stuff you're hearing from the third heaven. That's where God is. That's the highest and most spiritual realm, the dwelling place of God and, and angels and, and other heavenly beings. That's our eternal realm. That's where we go as believers after we pass from this earthly realm. The apostle Paul said he was caught up in paradise and heard inexplicable things, things he was not allowed to say. I tell you guys all the time, I hear a lot. Now, my husband knows. I There are even some things I haven't even been able to tell my husband, and he knows that. I tell him, honey, I can't even tell you this. But I tell him mostly everything that I'm allowed to, and that's most of it. But God will, the Holy Spirit will speak to me and say, this is for you. This is for you to listen and bring forth what you know will help my people. That's that and me and help me. I'm one of those people. Okay. So the principalities reside in the second heaven. Satan is the prince and the power of the air. People will hear that and think it's God. And Satan will give it to them to make them look like fools. But be very careful who you give your ear to. So why are there principalities over a region or a city or a country? Um, should we engage in second heaven warfare? Should we speak in our heavenly language, praying and declaring and keeping our faith high? Of course, of course. Jacob's ladder was a portal. But I'm going to give, and I said it last night on Solomon's porch, and I'm going to say it again. We have to bind. It says to bind demonic powers and loose the power of God. That's why I always say, go in the power of God at the end. So yes to all of that. Should we go places and, 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 and pray to open a portal so that God's glory and heaven, the power of heaven will come down? Sure. If that's what God's telling you to do. I don't think it should be re like religious, like, okay, every day I pray, open a portal. Every day I pray this. Okay. I do that. Then you're in religion again. We need to proceed out of every word out of the mouth of God. That's how we proceed. But what, what happened? Most people, that's all I hear. Well, I decreed and declared great. Wonderful. Well, I went somewhere and I think a portal was opened and you know, we felt the problem. awesome. That's wonderful. And we're still in the mess we're in. We're still in the mess we're in. What's missing? What's missing? How about we get not only do that stuff, which is awesome, uh, but we get back to, okay, Dennis, Ephesians 6.14. Okay, 611. Sorry. If I just said 614, it's 611. I'm sorry. I can't remember everything. But Dennis, thank you, honey. Uh, he's always keeping me on track. Thank God for my husband. Um, what? It's always good. People, you know, I decree and declare that this won't happen. And it still does. Okay. 
I, you know, I portals are open everywhere. We're still dealing with the mess. Things are happening. Praise the Lord. Things happen at our gatherings all the time. Praise the Lord. But what happened to the great commission of Jesus? Jesus said, this was his, this was his commission to believers. Did he say, go into all the world and open every portal you can and, and go into all the world, march around buildings seven times and go into all the world and do this and do that. No, you know what he said? He said, it's very simple. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all nations and make disciples of all people. I was talking to, uh, I was talking to Dennis about this. Uh, yesterday. And he said something and I said it last night. And he said, you know what, honey, in my estimation, you want to get a city, uh, a full city saved, get the mayor saved. You want to get a state saved, get the governor saved. We have a POTUS, true one, that is that. And because of that, he is doing everything humanly and spiritually possible to veer this nation in the right way. Someone witnessed to him. He received the spirit of God into his heart, the spirit of Jesus into his heart because of someone and people speaking to him about God. But we need to bring people to Christ, whether it's through how you, your, your life and you say it without words, whether you walk up to Tom, someone when you, you, you have to look at people differently in a store. Maybe God will lead you to walk up to someone to say, you know, God loves you. Anytime I've done that, more than not, people have started crying right there. We need to realize that is the, that's the strongest way to fight Satan and his minions. If there are 20,000 people in your town and 5,000 are saved and that 5,000 got another 5,000, that's 10,000. Satan is hightailing it out of there. That is too much, too much for them. So we need, we need to remember that in our world today, Jesus gave a great commission. And that commission should not be forgotten. I don't, you know, we, we take an altar call a lot in our gatherings and also on Solomon's porch. We're hoping at some point people will say to us and write to us, hey, I've got five people. I'm sitting with them at in front of my TV. It's going to be our church. And three of them really do not believe Jesus is Lord. I just want you to know that in case God leads you down the road of giving an altar call for salvation. I'm waiting for people to write that to me because they can use us. When you hear my testimony, snorting cocaine every day, smoking pot, five packs of cigarettes, everything you can think of and into the occult and like that, it's gone. And then three days later, I'm in a class with Michael Brown. Now, now he's Dr. Michael Brown called Angels, Demons, and Deliverance. That's what's needed. We've got our arsenal of all the stuff we're doing. We got to add that, folks. We got to add that. But I did this today to give you a little understanding of the heavens, that the unseen world is even greater than the seen world. It's more powerful than the seen world on this earth. He's the God of this earth. We have to live up here. We have to fight in the spirit. That's how we battle 
the battle we're saying. And you know, Solomon said, there's nothing new under the sun, and that's true. Just know that he, Satan will try to deceive you, whether it be politically, in your home, in your family. You got to be smarter, be one step ahead. Understand all I said here and understand that the battle takes place in the heavenlies. I hope this has helped you in some way. Now I will take questions. If there are any, if they're not, then I'm going to have lunch. Um, yeah, that's true. I'm seeing some stuff. I don't, okay. Um, um, okay. Uh, Sean, Delora, Kim had a, a word about Q and about A. Okay, okay, so, okay, I got that. You're saying Antarctica. I recently reached, rewatched this prophecy, and it's very clear that they are locations where there is a heat weapon. Okay, uh, Sean, I promise you I will answer that, but not here. All that stuff is where I'm going with Antarctica. Okay. And I may do that Wednesday if you guys want me to. If not, I'm going to do it Friday. But thank you. That's a grace to. Um, uh, do you believe in one saved, always saved? No, I don't. And I'll tell you why. One scripture. The Bible says that God is married to the backslider. I rest my case. If there is, if you're once saved, always saved, how can it be? How can there be backsliders? Okay. Um, um, Delora, who is your church pastor or leader? You or Dennis? Okay. That's an interesting question. Dennis and I are very, make decisions together. Uh, he is the head of our home. That doesn't mean he rules over me. He actually listens to me more than I listen to him. That's our relationship. We've been married a long time. We're happier now than we've ever been. So let's go to the church. I am an ordained pastor. Dennis is an ordained pastor. Dennis is also, I don't go into this a lot because I hate titles, okay? You can call me Pastor Delora. I don't have a problem with that. But I hate titles. So Dennis is an apostle. Okay. I'm more of a prophet. The apostle and prophet are very powerful together. That's in the fivefold ministry. If you look in the fivefold ministry, <laughs> Dennis, maybe you can help me here. I'm trying, I'm trying to be nice. Um, how can I say this? Dennis, I will um, acquiesce to Dennis because of his apostolic call, not because of his pastoral call, okay? I hope I can, uh, Dennis, if there's anything else I should add to that, let me go. No, I will acquiesce to Dennis because he's my husband and I consider him the head of our home. And if we're battling and don't agree, I will acquiesce to, to what he feels. And I believe if, if he's wrong, God will show him and God has showed him. I hope that answers your question. I do not want to hear a question that are women supposed to be pastors because I will probably scream because what people have done is they've made the culture of that day the doctrine of ours, and it's wrong. Janet, I hope I hope that helped you. Um, okay, let's see. I got to go back up now. Um, okay, this one. How how uh, to get accurate discernment without judging? Uh, you pretty much will know. If you've got aught with that person, uh, say it's someone that really did you wrong and you're like discerning they're off the wall with what they're saying, 
It's probably judging, unless you got completely healed of that. Uh, judging and discernment is a whole nother show. Uh, judging comes from your man. Discernment comes from God. Okay? If there are, is no ought in you, no, ooh, they really aggro, ooh, ooh. And you're, then it's probably discernment. But if there's something in you that you have against who you're listening to, or I don't agree with that, they said this, then it could be judgment. Okay. That's about as close as I can get to what it actually is. Um, Queen Esther, what is your opinion on the teaching about the serpent seed who came because of believe that I'll, I'm not even going there. Baloney. That's, that's my, how about that? <laughs> How about that, Queen Esther? There's an answer for you. So, so scriptural. <laughs> but the Bible does say, if I'm going to go back a little bit, the Bible does say submit one to another. I'm going back up. I just remembered that. The Bible says submit one to another. And that's kind of how Dennis and I live our lives. We even do that in our ministry. We submit one to another, even though Dennis and I are the head of the ministry. Um, okay. I just, Eve, I just showed you that. I thought the Nephilim were destroyed in the flood, but their spirits were left in the world. Okay, you got to go back. If you weren't here, Numbers and Genesis both say that that the Nephilim were not destroyed in the flood. That's scripture. Go back and listen. I already covered that. Um, okay. Uh, did God replace the third of the fallen angels? Uh, the, the, I have to line things up with scripture and nowhere does it say. He has created anything else other than he created at, at the beginning. Um, <laughs> walking in faith. I am funny. I am. I am. I have to be real. That's like ba lo ni ba lo ni. Okay. Okay. Would you do a broadcast sharing your testimony, how you got saved and got together with Dennis? Yes, Marisol. I can do that. Um, a lot of people know it already because they've been following me quite a while and I, I say it little here and a little there, but um, shameless plug in the description, uh, there's uh, our book falling into greatness. And that's what happened to us. We actually fell into it. Um, and that it explains pretty much all of it, but it is a wild story that if I wrote a novel, I, our life, if I wrote a novel, I couldn't, make up the stuff that has happened to us in our life. It is wild. Um, uh, Caroline Phyllis, I'm not going to go into that. That is going to open up a can of worms that I will um, say another day. Uh, I, I, that's a whole teaching. I can't. I can't say that. How can I do that and, and give you a, a, an answer? And it's uh, And I got to be honest with you. Um, it feels a little bit like a gotcha. That's the spirit I'm discerning. So um, I don't agree with that at all. Uh, so I'm not even going there. I'm not even going to give it time. Um, does the Bible say anything about female pastors? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I said, Ryan, that in the culture of um, uh, when when this all happened, Jesus came in the first church and everything, uh, it it, it talks, it doesn't, it says that uh, no woman should be over a man. That's what it says. But it also said women need to cover your heads. It also said women need to sit alone on one side of the church. Women can't be taught. They have to learn through their husbands. It also says you still need to sacrifice. It also said, you know, I could go on and on and on. See, we pick and choose. People pick and choose. So this we have to realize that was the culture of that day. That was um, scripture that moved that church along. Yet Paul, uh, there were pastors in the first church that were women. Uh, they taught in the first church. So uh, we have to be careful, Ryan, that we do not make culture doctrine. That's what we got to be careful of. Um is true. Do you believe beginning? That's a little off. Uh, Renee uh, Abshire, that's off topic. I'm not going to go there. Um, uh, am I correct? Uh, Roy, I can't give a an answer. 
if your wife has been in many hospitals the last 10 years, uh, you've concluded demonic activity could very well be. Um, and I don't normally give a plug like this, but I know it tends to be a little expensive and they do have payment plans and stuff, but you can actually get a brain map. Uh, I know Dr. Amen, uh, spoken like A-A-M-E-N, -A -A -E I've never met him. I don't know him. I am only know of someone that went there and was in the same situation as you, uh, Roy, and ended up finding out because they brain map so they can tell um, if there's something physiological that has gone on. I hope that helps. Um, uh, I could be, Leslie, but again, Tataria, that stuff is all about Antarctica. I don't want to go down that road. Um, Okay, interesting question, Joyce. Can you differentiate the Father's choice from Jesus, the Holy Spirit? Well, uh, this is, you know, when I was first saved, um, I heard, um, okay, thank you, honey, for that. For the person that said, once saved, always saved, uh, Dennis said, please look into Hebrews 10, 26, okay? That addresses once saved, always saved. Thank you, baby. Okay, uh, can you differentiate the Father's voice? When I was first saved, um, I heard God's voice audibly so loud and never heard it that loud again. And this is what he said to me. And it was right before we got arrested and I was laying hands on someone in our little office. I was saved about a week. And this is what he said to me. I am one. Faith is all. Never forgot it. I can still hear his bellowing voice in my ear. So, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are always, are all, they are the triune God. How do I know one is one the other? I really don't, but I kind of have an assumption. Who, well, who's speaking? Who's leading? I find that the Holy Spirit leads, kind of leads me, and I can see it. it's a little softer. It's the, it's the realm of the spirit that makes me reach out to people. Jesus speaking is more the realm he was in. Um, I, I feel, I, I don't really feel it's Jesus most of the time. I feel it's either the Holy Spirit or God. That's how be Joyce, that's the way I live. God is the, you know, the bigger picture. What I'm speaking today, I feel God the Father spoke this stuff to me so people will understand the Spirit and his creation better. That's that's what I believe. Now there are times, and I'm going to have to get off a little bit because I got a, an appointment, but the whole, there there are times where I feel, and I tell uh, I, I tell Dennis, I feel like I'm, I'm flipping tables. Man, I get I get this righteous anger. It happened last night about people that uh, actually Fab Four, it happened on Friday night. People that are trying to take Mr. T and throw him under the bus to slide somebody else in instead of him. So... I, I get, I got the, that righteous anger. That was like channeling Jesus, man, flipping tables. So Joyce, I hope that, I hope that helps, but I really don't know. I really don't know. I, I, I can feel it sometimes, but I don't really have to identify it. I just know it's Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and it's a triune God. Um, I'm to the point I want to go where people play church, but aren't dealing with the spirit. Do we just, um, uh, uh, curious tadpole. I'm to the point where I don't want to go where people play church, but aren't dealing with what's going to spirit world. Did you, do you, we just stop going and do our own thing, do your own thing. No, uh, find, uh, uh, I, I wouldn't go anywhere. They play church, but that's me. I, I can't, I, I get up and walk out. So, um, what would I do? You can join us on Sunday nights. We have online church. There's other, some other good people that have online church. Um, I don't want to mention any because then I, I, then someone's going to say, why don't you mention me? Why don't you mention me? So I don't really mention anyone ever. 
Um, but we have a, a church service for people just like you uh, at Solomon's Porch, the gathering at Solomon's Porch uh, Sunday night at six o'clock on our Rumble channel. So I hope that helps. Do your own thing. Mm. Hebrew said, do not forsake the assembling of, of, of the gathering of people. So that's what we do. We gather people. We have a great chat. Yes, we do. Uh, what's the exact uh, Geneva Bible that you use? There are many. Uh, I don't have a hard copy like I do of my King James right here, but the one online I use is 1599 Geneva. That's with Bible Gateway and stuff. Uh, I just can't use King James very much anymore. I check it now and then NIV is totally off my list. Um, uh, has been found. Um, many don't know Noah, Noah's Ark has been found. Maybe do a show on that. When I listen to someone that convinces me enough that it was found, I absolutely will. If you know someone, I've, everybody I know uh, hasn't convinced me actually, but you can send it to ddgathering at gmail.com. Uh, bless you. Thank you for doing that. Um, okay, let's see. What else? Uh, um, Delora Flat Earth brought me to God. Wow. Wow, forever young. Yikes. That's pretty amazing. Is it because of that the devil is lying about it? Uh, that is another whole show as well. Um, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go on that road. I, I, you know, I really didn't want to. I, I touch on it. Um, I don't want to lose people over it because I, I, I know what Dennis and I authentically say. I don't. I can't trust a lot of other people what they're saying, <laughs> so I don't want to um, say it. But you know, um, but yeah, I, 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 that's pretty awesome for every young uh, Caroline Phyllis. If I was incorrect about you, then I apologize. I just think that's a topic that's personal and that needs to be discussed one-on-one. -on -one. You can write to me and I will tell you, but not something that I'm going to put out, out there because, again, I don't really like titles at all. Um, but it just didn't see, it seemed a little off to me. That's all. If I'm wrong, I apologize. Um, uh uh, Margaret, this is not that platform uh, to start praying for everybody uh, for deliverance. Again, you can put that in the chat or write ddgathering at gmail.com. My husband and I will pray for you. Our team will pray for you. But um, that's Solomon's Porch. That's Sunday night, our service. We pray for it all the time. Um, okay. Uh, da, da, da. Um, okay. Okay. Thank you. Wow, that's awfully nice to hear, Vinnie Doom. Thank you. Thank you for that. What a, what a sweet thing to say. I hope I hope people hear me. Um, if God created X amount of angels and they cannot reproduce hell, then at the end will come together with women to make the Nephilim. Because they did. <laughs> because they did. How do I know how? They did. The word said they did. They did. Uh, they exist. They're here. Pretty obvious. I don't know. How do I know how it happened? I have no clue. Uh, God created X amount. Nowhere does it say he ever created any more. If anybody says that God, he knows God created more, please tell me. Because then I would be, I would know that then. Because I don't. I don't know where God said he created more. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay. A um, couple more. Uh Address what's going on in France with your first family. I uh, don't want to say too much. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can you, uh, about the France thing, can you write to me personally, DD Gathering at Gmail? Thank you. Um, and and thank you for loving the new show. I love it too. I love it too. Um, let's see. Who am I? One or two more. Um, yeah, Sean Allen. I get it. I get it. Don't want to go down that road, but yeah. Yeah, I get it. Um, uh, it would be great. Okay. Um, I thought it'd be a, a lot to discuss blows our imagination. God is fascinating and amazing. Yes, Marisol. I'm going to, I really am. I, you know, I, and I, I gotta be honest with you guys. Let me just, and I'm going to probably end with this. Um, I'm going to end with this right here, guys. I'm sorry. I'm not going to do any more. Um, let me tell you why. Let me leave that up, Marisol's. Uh, God is fascinating and amazing. 
Yeah, he really is. This is my problem. And please hear my heart. I have a very hard time saying this, but I'm just me and I'm just honest and I can't be anything, but doesn't matter if I've got two people watching or 25,000. There are people who question everything else I teach and what everything else I believe and everything else I found to be true because I question the shape of the earth. They disregard everything I say. They disregard miracles that have happened in our midst. They disregard that I, my husband and I serve God at the expense of us, guys. You don't understand what this cost us. No one knows. I can't even go into it because I'll start to cry. So when I go down that road, Marisol, I lose people. I lose friends. I lose people that I worked with for many, many years that now think I'm crazy. They're that, they're that under that programming that much. They can't see it. And they're great people. And they see a lot of the other things, but they cannot see that. And I don't have a problem if they can't see it, but they don't even question it, even with who N-A-S-A are. So I'm careful. I don't know if I want to do one just on that, but I will touch on it again. Um when I do Antarctica. And Karen, you made my day. <laughs> Delora, the explorer. <laughs> that is the best. <laughs> I'm leaving that up. Delora, the explorer. For those of you who don't know, there's a cartoon, Dora, the explorer. <laughs> Delora, the explorer. Thank you, my friend. Yeah, that, that made my day. I'm going to take it down. All right, guys, that's that's the end of it. Um, I'm hungry. I need to eat. Uh, oh, Marsha Wood, she says, I'm crying with you, Dolores. Similar experiences. Yeah, I, I can't I can't go into it because I really will cry. I I, I look like, a, you know, I was talking to Renee about this today. You know, um, people people know how strong I am and I'm strong and people know that I, I, you know, when I'm, man, when I'm moving in the power of God, I, I'm like a maniac. I'm like, like Jesus, you know, pick up the dirt, spin it, put it on somebody's side. That's me. That's how the Holy Spirit moves through me. So I, I seem very strong and I am, you can ask my husband. And, but with strength, sometimes people see like a shell or a hardness. That is so opposite of me. You have no idea. So I can't even say certain things that hurt my heart. Because I will cry and I don't want to be a blubbering, you know, mess. I'm almost there already uh, on here. So that's, but thank you. Thank you for making me laugh, Delora the Explorer. Wow. Let me just say this. Um, he shall give his angels charge over you. Look how beautiful it is. Look at this. The angel wings with the with the hearts. This is on joyandcountry.com. Go get it. It helps us do gatherings. Uh, it's in um, it's in the watercolor collection, and it's also in Dolores Closet. There's a bunch of them. There's one that says uh, uh, "Faith, Hope, and Love." I mean, there's so many. The beautiful, beautiful watercolor wings. I, it's just gorgeous. Very exclusive. Um, uh, oh, Jill, thank you. She said, I just found you yesterday. So glad to find someone merging it all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you all so much. All the new people. God bless you, man. God bless you for even giving me your time, all of you. Um, I love you all. I thank you all. Uh, go to Joy and Country for my shirt. We'll all match and be, be twinsies. Um, Please uh, remember, look in the, for the link, look in the description for this. And then in the description also is everywhere else you'll find me. Uh, be blessed, my friends. 
uh, every day of every week. Be blessed. And as I always say, and remember this now, especially with the teaching you had today, go in the power of God. Have a great day. I will see you.